Hello everyone, I am Jatin Bhadwaj and I am going to discuss the question number 13 from the GS paper 1 in this year's means examination that is means 2023. The question belongs to the history section and this question belongs to the part of modern India. Now in modern India, the syllabus itself calls about the contributors and their contributions. Now, tribals are the most important contributors towards the Indian national struggle or freedom struggle because they must have played an important role towards the anti-colonial sentiments in India. Although they were not linked with the mass movements during the Gandhian phase, but their contribution is very, very, very important from the perspective of this examination as well as the modern Indian history. Now, let's go to the question. The question says, how did the colonial rule, that is the British rule, affect the tribals in India. Now, this is your first part of the question. Now, question can be divided into two. The first one is, how does it affect the tribals? Now, please understand. Britishers came with an objective of colonizing. They came with an objective of commercial exploitation. Whenever they wanted more money, they had to intervene in the domestic or the lives of the locals. For that, they had to expand the agriculture because agriculture the, was the most important economic activity back then. In order to expand agriculture, they had to clear the forest and they have to enter into the tribal regions. So this was the policy of expansionism. This policy of expansionism had an objective of higher land revenue. Apart from that, they also tried to enforce their cultural practices on the tribal people. For example, the expansion of Christian missionaries on the tribal culture or restricting the movement of Naga sadhus or restricting the human sacrifice among the tribals. Now, all these activities clearly pointed out that there was an anti-colonial sentiment which was developing among the tribals. All these reasons had one objective, the commercial one. And because of this, they also tried to restrict the forest rights which were enjoyed by these tribal communities across India. They even restricted the forest dwellers to enter the forest. They captured the forest for the commercial purposes and tried to use timber and the other mine and foreign produce for their own commercial benefit. This was not acceptable by the tribal. So for that, tribal had to respond. Now this is the second part of your answer. How did they respond it? Now, in most of the books and study material, we have read that the most important way of protesting or responding was to go for rewards or you can say wars. Now, this was the most important medium to go anti-colonial, but this was not the only medium. Some of the tribes themselves had called for peaceful protest, which included the forest Satyagraha. which called for, you can say, religious or cultural revivalism to counter the impact of Christian or the modern society. For example, Birsa Munda himself called for expansion of the tribal culture and complete ban on the intoxicants, especially alcohol. Now, that was a peaceful protest. Forest Satyagraha was a peaceful protest. That's why I said that writing just the response in the terms of rewards, guerrilla warfare is not going to meet the complete demand of this answer. Now, for that matter, we have to be more diverse on our approach. For example, some of them even follow the policy of isolation, especially in the Himalayan region. When they got to know that there is an interference from the colonial powers, which goes against their culture and economy and the social practices, they secluded themselves from the mainstream politics. And they tried to remain on the hilly areas completely secluded from these British Empire. Now, these are the responses that you have to write in the answer, but it should be the second part of your answer. So, the body can be divided into two. First, what was the effect of the British rule? And second, how it was responded. And then you can conclude that despite their best of the efforts, Britishers were not able to
to dilute the tribal culture. The second conclusion could be that because of these historical events that shaped up, India after independence adopted the policy of non-interference. In his tribal punch shield, Jawaharlal Nehru, our first Prime Minister, used the policy of non-interference and respecting the rights, cultural, social rights of the tribals. So from where did they learn this? From the experience that we got during the freedom struggle. Now in order to answer this question, you can easily see that the British colonial expansion led, in the introduction, British colonial expansion led to the unwanted interference. This was unwanted. No tribe ever invited Britishers to intervene in their social and cultural life. In the tribal region as well, this further led to the various conflicts and revolts during the 19th and the 20th century, 20th before independence. So this is how basically you can start that war, what happened and what actually led because of that happening. Now, how colonial rule affect Indian tribes? Number one. Land revenue policy. We all know that because of the expansions of the Zamidari system, they intervene into the commercialization where the tribes were actually forced to commercialize their crops. And we all know, commercialization of the agriculture actually led to the more diversity, but it calls for more uncertainty as well. Because commercial crops, let's take the example of cotton, cannot be supplemented with the food crop. So if there's a famine, and a farmer has not grown wheat or rice, his family will not survive. So we see that regions under Chor, regions under Munda revolted against them. Second is the policy of interference in the social and the religious practices of the tribe. For example, they tried to reduce or restrict the Maria sacrifice, that is human sacrifice among the Khon tribe. Even the Christian missionaries tried to convert the tribals against their wishes. The third important reason is the policy of expansionism. Britishers, right after the Battle of Plassey and Buxar, tried to expand their empire in India as much as possible, which also included the tribal regions. So communities face the land disposition and the encroachment by the colonial power as well as their landlords. So landlords actually became the absentee landlords. They captured the territories but never worked on them. One of the example is Santhal tribal region where Santhal revolt took place. Then comes the protection of the forest rights. They cut off the tribals of their own forest rights. Forest Act of 65, Indian Forest Act 1878 talks about restricting the tribal access to their own tribal region. Hence, it is bound to take place that the revolt will be there. Now, how they have responded? This is the second part of the answer. Now, how they have responded? Number one, resistance and the rebellion, which includes the battles, the wars, the rewards. Some tribal communities resisted through the armed uprisings and the rebellions. We have many such examples. Santhals is there, Bengal and Basta rebellion is there. The second is the policy of isolation and avoidance. Many of the tribal, especially in the Himalayan region, try to keep themselves away from the British work culture. So they kept themselves isolated from the British interference. Third, cultural preservation. So this is the another response. Some tribe responded to the colonialism by making effort to preserve their own cultural heritage and the tradition. This is unique. Birsa Munda, for example, as I gave you, called for giving up of the drinking liquor. What is that? Protecting your own tribal culture from the invaders. And the last one, some non-violent means. So all of the means were not violent. Some of them were non-violent also. In certain cases, tribal leaders, communities opted for violating the laws and rules of the British such as Bhagat movement and refused to pay land rent. So what is that? That is a kind of non-cooperation movement and civil disobedience movement at a smaller scale. So they broke the law, but they also called for non-violent means of protest. Kecho tribe, for example, called for forest satyagraha, which is a non-violent means or a non-cooperation movement. Now see, this answer could easily be, uh, this answer could easily be taken up as a means to provide what was British doing against the tribes and how tribes actually responded for that. 
and in the conclusion you can easily write that because of this historical events that took shape in india the rise of colonial interference in the region across india gave rise to the anti british sentiment which is true they were also against the colonial rule now this helped the nationalist leaders especially jawaharlal nehru to unite these tribe regions after the independence and follow the policy of non interference that is one of the concept of tribal punch sheet now through this you can easily answer this question and you can gain as many marks as possible thank you